Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be taking a look at the entry grade RX-78 II, specifically the US or American version. Yeah, we're looking at the Target exclusive US color scheme. It's, wait, hold up a sec. No, 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 no. Well, anyway, this US version is basically the same kit as the original, even selling for around the same $10. So I figured, why not, you know? As always, we'll be looking at this kit in four categories. The build, the appearance, the articulation, and the gimmicks. While this kit is probably aimed at newer builders, I always enjoy seeing how Bandai manages to streamline these more budget-friendly kits. Alright, now let's get started with this build. You know, maybe I'm just used to 20-year-old Master Grades, but I'm just blown away by how well thought out the engineering of this cheap little kit is. Everything here is so simple, and yet, it just works. I mean, I'm sure experienced builders can have this guy put together blindfolded, but at the same time, it's really interesting to see how streamlined this build is. The part separation specifically is really amazing, and shows just how far Gunpla Engineering has gone in recent years. You'd think a cheap kit like this would be full of stickers, but nope, almost everything here is a molded piece. For example, you have this standard V on the waist section, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this as just a solid piece of plastic with a crappy sticker thrown on top. But not here, it's actually an individual piece. The head is also perfectly implemented. Even the eyes, which are usually a sticker, are actually molded pieces here. Just amazing. This would be a great kit for a custom paint job, as there's really no need for masking here. If you're thinking of getting into painting, this would definitely be a great place to start. Or at least, the standard version would. I mean, it'd be a shame to cover up this unique red, white, and blue color scheme. Anyway, despite the amazing part separation, there is some corner cutting done on this kit. The main one is that you'll notice a few more seam lines than usual. There's one on the top of the head, the side of the chest, and more prominently, running down the front of the leg. This one is definitely something you're going to want to use some putty on. Thankfully, it's on white armor, so even in a basic snap build like I have here, if you press the pieces together well enough, the seam line doesn't stand out too much. Other than that, there's a few strange gaps in these joints that can look kind of off, like these on the elbow. Sure, it's really simple engineering that provides the look of an inner frame without actually having one, but it does result in this open section here. It's kind of hard to ignore once you see it. Same goes for these gaps in the chest. I don't think Putty would fix these. As for the optional detailing, given how great this part separation is, there's less of a list than I'm used to. Of course, there's always some extra work you could do if you want to upgrade your build. First up, we have all these little locks on the joints. They unfortunately come as single white pieces, so you'll need to add some gray inside of them if you want them to look good. Or you can just be lazy like me and say it's the magnetic coating version. Next, we have the usual head vents, which could use some gray paint. The back camera also needs some added color, probably blue in this case, to match the front camera. Another optional painting location is this gray frame on the shoulders. While it provides some really cool shoulder articulation, this gray isn't exactly anime accurate. It should really be white like the rest of the armor. Lastly, you could put some gray inside some of these exposed sections, just to add a bit more detail. I think adding some gray inside of the shoulders specifically would look really great. Also some gray to the underside of the skirts, and maybe a little on the inside of the heel. Small touch-ups like this with a gray Gundam marker are going to go a long way in improving this kit. Overall, this build is really something, especially at its price point. While there is some corner cutting in regards to seam lines, and a few unnecessary gaps, the general simplicity and part separation more than make up for it. Honestly, just seeing how streamlined Bandai has managed to get a standard Gundam build is alone worth the price of this kit. Now that we have this guy built, let's take a look over this appearance. First up are these proportions. They look just amazing. Sure, it has some modern streamlining, but it still maintains a very blocky 80s design. I'm a huge fan. Of course, the legs have the usual slimming up, but the chest is still decently sized, especially in comparison to that weird high-grade revive Gundam. I mean, this is kind of night and day when you look at it. The shoulders are also in great proportion to the chest, and the head, while a little on the small side, still fits in perfectly with this design. This really looks like a modern version of the iconic Granddaddy Gundam. 
I honestly wouldn't mind seeing this take in 1 100th scale. I will say some of the gaps from the engineering are fairly apparent when you notice them. These on the chest specifically always stand out to me. Next up, we have probably the most striking aspect of this kit, the American color scheme. Yeah, this is probably the selling feature of this kit. You know, I really love that this is more of a palette swap than a complete recolor. The original Gundam has such iconic color separation, so in my opinion, making too many changes would probably end up looking more awkward than cool. Anyway, this white is your standard Gundam white, but something about it does look more pure than the usual cheap kits. It may be the contrast with this deep red and blue, both of which look fantastic with perfect saturation. They're not so dark as to become boring, but also not so bright that they become toyish. Lastly for the appearance, we have the stickers. Yeah, despite the amazing part separation on this kit, there are some optional stickers here. They're all this American flag iconography. These stars on the left shoulder look amazing, with the white stars being a good match for the white plastic underneath. Also, these red stickers on the back of the shoulders look really unique, as they pair great with the red back skirts below. I'm less a fan of this stripe on the shield. While it does look cool, unfortunately it has to fold over some oddly shaped edges, so it usually starts peeling up over time. Same goes for these two red stripes wrapping around the leg. This icon on the right shoulder also isn't the best. See, despite the shoulder already being white, this blue icon is part of a big white sticker. It just doesn't blend well with the surrounding white, having weird edges and a different texture. In general, these stickers are a bit hit or miss, but the rest of this suit looks amazing. Great proportions, solid colors, and in the case of this US version, a really unique color palette. This kit really doesn't look as cheap as it is. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing this take on the original Gundam in a larger 1 100th scale. Maybe one day, right? Next up, we'll see what kind of articulation this guy has to offer. Starting with the feet, you get a ton of movement from this heel which is great considering the feet are just bricks. The whole ankle also tilts forwards and backwards, but it's not too useful. You get a very respectable 135 degree bend from the knee, solid enough for most poses. The hips are a very shallow ball joint on a swivel, so great kicks, decent splits, and the usual twists. I will say this front skirt armor hampers the leg mobility quite a bit. It's a little hard to move out of the way considering how close it is to the chest. The side skirts move a bit easier though, being on loose ball joints. The back skirt on the other hand is completely locked in. The chest features some really interesting connections based around a double ball joint at a 90 degree angle. All said and done, you wind up with some really great ab crunches. These do come at the cost of those gaps in the chest though, so be mindful. The shoulders are more ball joints so you get the usual movement. Bandai did throw in a swivel on top though, that allows you to raise the arm upward for that final shooting pose. Working our way down the arm, we have the usual swivels on top and a little bit more than a 90 degree bend from the elbow. Nothing super interesting here. This kit only comes with a single set of hands. Kind of a letdown, but considering how cheap this kit is and his general lack of weapons, which we'll cover in a minute, it kind of makes sense to only have a single set of hands. Lastly for this articulation, we have the head, which is the usual double ball joint. This allows for some solid katoki poses. The articulation here is really about average by modern standards. I'd say it's just a bit of a step down from the high grade revived version of the RX-78. Of course, this has much blockier, and in my opinion better, proportions, so I'm cool with losing a little articulation here and there. Lastly, let's take a look at what gimmicks this kit comes with. Yeah, this is going to be a short one. First up is the token beam rifle. It's about as basic as it gets, not even coming with a colored scope. This is really just two hunks of gray plastic slapped together. Having said that, it's fine for what it is. While I would have preferred a yellow scope, this really wouldn't be too hard to paint up yourself. You can also hold this rifle just fine thanks to the single set of dedicated hands. So you can go for just about any shooting pose you'd like here which is a good thing, because you really aren't going to get anything from these beam sabers. Yeah, they don't actually come with any effect pieces, so you just have the handles. Definitely some cost cutting on Bandai's part. His final gimmick is this shield. 
I'm a huge fan of this red, white, and blue design. It's bold, but it doesn't overload my eyes. By the way, for painting, you're going to want to dab some gray into these circles, as they're just a part of this blue piece. And that's all the gimmicks this guy comes with. This is really where Bandai cut the most corners. I mean, not having effect pieces for the beam saber is borderline criminal. Now it's time to wrap all this up. This kit is really amazing for its price tag. The build here is fantastically simple, featuring some amazing part separation. The appearance is extremely solid, with some great proportions and colors. The articulation is also pretty alright, being able to hit all the standard poses you'd expect. The only real letdown was the gimmicks, which are very sparse on this kit. Still, I can't help but be amazed with how solid this kit is given its price tag. Sure, you're probably better off spending the extra 5 bucks and buying a legit high grade online. But, you know, there's something to be said for how accessible a kit like this is. Someone is totally just going to see this kit on a shelf and buy it on a whim without any knowledge of what Gunpla is. I don't know, I'm totally ranting here, but something about seeing how accessible Gunpla has become really amazes me and has given me a whole new appreciation for these cheaper kits. You know, I can't remember what my 100th build was, but I sure remember my first, and this kit is definitely going to be someone's first. Thankfully, Bandai made sure they're going to have a great time with it. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me indulge in that rant for a minute. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to leave a comment or follow me on Twitter or Instagram. If you have any questions about this kit, you can totally leave a comment too, and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.